So round 8 of the 2021 season brought us to France at the circuit Paul Ricard Not too many upgrades to talk about But one team that is gunning for the win this weekend is the Alfa Romeo team After they completely bottled it last season after Bottas and Vettel was battling so hard that Brown overtook them and ended up winning the race but let's get into the grid for this French Grand Prix so it's a Ferrari 1-2 for the third time this season with Verstappen ahead of Charles Leclerc Row 2 is Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel P3 and P4 Sergio Perez has an excellent qualifying for P5 with Valtteri Bottas P6 P7 is George Russell with Pierre Gasly being way down in P8 Running out the top 10 is Devon Butler and Lucas Weber Just missing out on the top 10 is Alexander Albon just ahead of Carlos Sainz the seat he wants at Red Bull Row 7 is an all McLaren affair with Nico Hulkenberg just beating Lando Norris for P13. Daniel Ricciardo has a 5 place grid penalty and will start 15th just ahead of Antonio Giovinazzi. Then it is an all house affair with Roman Grosjean just ahead of Kevin Magnussen. On the final row of the grid is Lance Stroll and Brown who had an awful qualifying and couldn't find any pace in the car. This is the track then 15 corners, 3.6 miles. It's not one for overtaking this one. Will it be today though? Let's head down to the track. Hi guys, Brown here. Welcome to the F1 career mode part 48 for the French Grand Prix. If you missed the last episode, do make sure to get, check that out in Canada. That had an absolutely worldly response on it. So thank you so much for that. Um, this video, not going to be live com because I literally in terms of recording I recorded this as soon as I finished uploading Canada so I didn't know at the time how well Canada was going to do but into this weekend and we're back down at the back we had a bad qualifying last season at France remember if you were on the channel then we started P16 and we won the race so we're four positions back from that could we win it? I don't know we're going to be doing a one stop from the mediums onto the hards and let's just get into this race we've got to go for the, the dives at the start to see if we can do it it's lights out and away we go the two Ferraris get away well then it is Hamilton and Vettel behind in the background we've got a poor start as the two Ferraris will wheel Hamilton's got getting in, involved there we go to the inside it's several cars down the inside we get past both McLarens there and we've got past the boat five six cars at the start and we're not done there yet because at the next corner we're going to go for another dive bomb now around the outside of the Tor Russo go for another dive bomb and now down the inside we go side by side with Devon Butler and I make that 10 cars after the first sector but we're still got to fend off Devon Butler here this is to put us in the P10 then Devin Butler down the inside, he gets past the we have to defend to the outside, he is on the soft side so he's going to have the tyre advantage, we're on the mediums is in the background of the Toro Rosso, I think that's Lucas Weber trying to get past, the, uh, past Devin Butler, but Devin Butler round our outside and he gets the job done as the tyres are fairly cold at this point, so we're into P11, so still if we count Devon Butler, we got 10 cars on the opening lap from starting in P20, so, but only legitly P9, you could kind of say. Skipping on now, though, to lap 2, here comes Lucas Weber down our inside. Carlos Sainz is the Red Bull in the background, he had an awful qualifying. A bit surprising that, with the Red Bull being one of the best cars on the grid, if you look at the r and I mean, supposedly Williams is the best car, but... I don't really believe that we're going to be left defending Lucas Weber here heading down the straight and we're free wide I think briefly there I don't think Carlos Sainz wants to commit into the corner no he doesn't he backs out Lucas Weber down on inside now we have to defend to the inside as the chicane goes back 
but he falls away but wide and now Lucas Weber is going to be left defending Carlos Sainz as the camera cuts and we can see all the way down the straight and now down the inside around the flat right hander I think it has a name but don't quote me on that I think it's good as down the inside goes Carlos Sainz and I think he's got the job done yes he has and now he's going to be chasing after us in his Red Bull that once upon a time was our red but on to lap three and now in in the first sector this this is we got an awful um exit of the last corner now carlos Sainz tries to go all the way around our outside down our inside he pushes us wide and gets that job done down the inside weren't really too happy with that we'll try our best to re-overtake him but i've got to be honest i wanted to overtake and re-overtake carlos Sainz, but we were left defending Lucas Weber, which was very annoying down the inside we go though and we somehow round the outside in fact we do get Carlos Sainz there so that was good but now we're going to be left defending him again in the Red Bull but this Williams fairly quickly in a straight line so it weren't too bad coming to defend down the two straights obviously down the inside there he goes Carlos Sainz gets us there but pushes us off the track and you know if you like know me and you know how I race if you watch these videos you know how kind of aggressive I can be I was raging after that you don't push often push me wide and I let you get away with it but we just had no pace as passes there went Lando Norris in fact, and Nico Hulkenberg in fact we had to defend Lando Norris. Carlos Sainz is pretty much gone now at this point. And we're just battling over P12, 13 and 14 here. With the two McLarens. We've kind of lost out now to Nico Hulkenberg. And now we meet even lose out to Lando Norris, our fellow Brit. Side by side we go. We're still side by side. We somehow get the exit and down the inside we are ahead of Lando Norris there Nico Hulkenberg just a bit too far up the road here on lap 6 and to the outside tries Lando Norris there we defend him and in fact we go so late on Nico Hulkenberg there we somehow get the job done and re-overtake him but side by side we go over to defend Nico Hulkenberg now Lando Norris is having a look at his teammate gonna try and go to the outside and now round the kind of long long double apex corner kind of a bit like spoon in japan the mclarens go side by side they're still there side by side somewhat three four corners later they're still side by side the two mclarens this is amazing now into the final corner is any of them going to give up down the inside it's norris on the outside Hogenberg on the inside can norris get the apex I think he just about has they're still kind of side by side though going on to lap 7 but in the end I think Lando gets the job done and they were side by side for a good 7-8 corners there it's amazing as Lando Norris gets past us now we defend to the outside as Lando locks up a little bit there and we do just about stay ahead of the McLaren there and this was kind of story of my race to be honest this just having to defend back to the inside goes Lando Norris and now we're free wide just for a split second there we tried to go back down the inside of Norris there and then Hulkenberg kind of took advantage tried to get round our outside we pushed him wide a little bit and now he's left defending Lucas Weber in the Toro Rosso and they're still side by side here and just like a couple of laps ago, literally the lap before Hulkenberg's going side by side with another car all the way through the final sector into that final corner. He's on the outside again. Can Lucas Weber um, get the job done? Yes, he can. Skipping on to lap nine. And these are the leaders come in to make their stops. They all started on the soft tyres. So they're coming in for the hards and doing the one stop to get them to the end of this race. now though on to lap nine that was lap nine this is the meaty end of lap nine we defend and um, nico hulkenberg all the way around the outside into the chicane and on to lap 10 
This is um, our teammate, George Russell, coming into the pits to make his one and only stop from the softs onto the hards. And now he will be going to the end of the race as well. So 27 laps there is here in France. So 17 laps is not too bad as Nico Hulkenberg re overtakes us there. And I think this time it's going to be hard to re overtake him onto lap 13. We couldn't actually re overtake Nico Hulkenberg there. Onto lap 13, into the pits comes Lando Norris. One lap later, into the pits goes Nico Hulkenberg. And it was at this point where I kind of realised that the, the soft tyres could do around 10 laps. So I decided to extend my stint. I was due to come in on lap 14. So I decided to extend my stint, go to lap 17. So now we can do an very aggressive one stop and then go to the end of the race on the soft tyres. Out of the pits we come. And we're just going to beat out a Toro Rosso there. So now we effectively have nine laps to just push and push and push. At the end of lap 18, we've caught the back of the two Haas boys. It's going to be Grosjean first. We're in his slipstream. We're going to go to the outside of Roman Grosjean. And we're going to absolutely sail like a boat all the way around his outside. Go back to his inside for the next corner and get that job done. Skipping on a couple of corners, we're going to go for it now on Kevin Magnussen and we're going to go aggressive to probably the most aggressive drivers on the grid in Grosjean and Magnussen. Now, one lap later, we're going to have to defend um, Magnussen, but can we, we can turn defence into an attack as we sail around the outside of Daniel Ricciardo there, like he wasn't even there, we swapped in the dummy. And he kind of sat in the middle of the track, don't, not really knowing what to do. One lap later on to lap 20, we are all over the back of Lance Stroll in the racing point. You can see I'm all over the track trying to find a way through. And eventually we go to the outside and then to the inside for the final corner. The next car up the road, I believe, is Lucas Weber in his Toro Rosso. As now we go on to lap 21, can we get past Lucas Weber? as quickly as we can and dispatch Jim like we did with the other cars we had a good battle with him he's on the hard tyres but can we do anything down the inside we go very late on Lucas Weber now to the outside of Lucas Weber to the inside again and we get that job done this happened just literally seconds before Max Verstappen has retired from the French Grand Prix the winner of Canada and it's come and he's retired and there's nearly contact there as he literally blows up in the middle of the track there was like it was the I think it was Sergio Perez trying to make a move on George Russell our teammate and you'll see here just how close it really was there's um, Charles Leclerc and Pete Gasly and there it is so close literally left right and centre trying to avoid him it's a big engine blower and I feel like this is Sergio Perez so this, this is making a move and then having to avoid the stricken car of Max Verstappen and this has actually brought out the safety car and something that is amazing since um, Codemasters have done the update with the safety car we've had one in every single race every time I'm not complaining because I'd rather see it at every incident than never see it at all. So as it comes in here, it was literally out for one lap. So, well, basically two laps, but pretty much one lap. It, it took one lap to collect everyone, and then that, and then the second lap was it coming in. So basically one lap. It will be Sebastian Vettel to lead him round. It it is a Alfa Romeo one two, and it is. The Red Bull of Pierre Gasly P3 is that an omen for Red Bull? The last time it was like that, Red Bull went on to win. I'll just take the credit for that. I'll sit myself out. But it is Vettel. He plants his foot coming out the final corner, and we will have five laps of racing. And now for us, no one pitted, by the way, when 
this 80 car came out and now we have got to continue to make our progress it kind of helps out a bit it helps with tire life as we go all the way around the outside or at least try to on Devon Butler I kind of had a bit of revenge and um, needing to take after the first lap and now we do get Devon Butler here and we're on the back of Nico Hulkenberg and Carlos Sainz is battling away with Lewis Hamilton and we are going to go all the way around the outside of both Nico Hulkenberg and Carlos Sainz we're going to get both of them and that is a mega move Carlos Sainz now going to lose out to Nico Hulkenberg and that is the best move I think I've ever done we go around the outside of Nico Hulkenberg and then we get Carlos Sainz as well and what makes that so great for me is that I didn't even mean to do it I literally I wanted to get around the outside of Nico Hulkenberg up there and then I outbroke myself and we got alongside Carlos Sainz as well so that was an absolutely amazing move so on to lap 25 so there's two laps to go after this one we are going to go to the outside for on Lewis Hamilton this is the battle for P8 down the inside we go Hamilton has then has the outside and we get the job done on Lewis Hamilton next the road is our teammate who's sitting pretty quite pretty in P7 Nico um, Lewis Hamilton defends our outside again tries to go around the outside but defend him again and now skipping on to the last lap it is going to be redemption for Alfa Romeo it's Sebastian Vettel who, lit, who wins from Factory Bottas from Pierre Gasly Charles Leclerc is fourth and it is Sergio Perez taking a, a great P5 a great win then for the Alfa Romeo team today what do you think it was Ant that gave them the edge over the competition today well the safety car completely changed the race didn't it it's hard to say exactly what would have happened without it, but there's no question that they came out of that situation in a good position. Alfa Romeo have been winning fans the world over with their brilliant driving, showing that they're a force to be reckoned with out there on the track. They'll certainly be building on that fan base after today's excellent result. So that was your French Grand Prix for the 2021 season and what a race it kind of turned out to be in the end, a bit of a strange one. Um, the aggressive strategy definitely helped, got us back into the top 10 and to be honest safety car kind of helped us with that because I don't know whether we had the pace to get into the top 10 without it. So that's a couple of more points for us, we needed that after what turned out to be an absolutely shocking race in Canada with Hamilton wiping us out so a little bit more aggressive with Hamilton after that contact in the constructors we uh, we now slip to four for the I think we were already already there in the drivers nothing really changed but back into the paddock now and we have to renegotiate our contract with Williams and our value kind of slipped a little bit since last time and you can kind of see the gap between was the kind of what our value is and what um our current contract is so it boosting up a little bit okay that proposal looks good it seems all parties are happy with the deal so it'll commence at the next race weekend williams happy with that we have a new contract that will come to effect from austria and we have to kind of start getting momentum in this season now i've got to be honest i think the championship is probably gone at this point just from how inconsistent we've been like I thought Monaco would kind of be the start of something and it really hasn't so I think I think the championship's probably gone we need to kind of set a different target now I think if we can finish in the top five for the championship I'll be fairly happy and call it a successful season because the car the R&D may say it's the best car on the grid, it definitely isn't, but if you're enjoying this series make sure to like and subscribe, hit the bell so you know when these videos come out, and I will see you 
in the next video. Goodbye.